are listening to an Atomic Broadcasting production. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the feature presentation. And remember, do your part, such as like, comment, rate, and don't forget to tell a friend to tune in for an Atomic Time. Now, where did we leave off? Ah, yes. Armed with newfound knowledge, the party struggled to put the pieces together into a coherent plan. As they returned from an errand in town, they came across a mysterious pair of strangers who appeared to be seeking them. Sundrop soda. That really is good, Jenkins. I told you. It's fantastic. It's a lot more citrus mm-hmm. than like a Sprite or something. Yeah. But it's a lot less harsh than like if you went for a... What's that called? The one that's the grapefruit that we keep uh, The one that I got confused with? Yeah. Squirt. Squirt. The squirt. Yeah. yeah. It's not as harsh as the squirt. That's a very, it's, it's a very round citrusy flavor. The only downside is Most it's caffeinated is if you want, if you don't want caffeinated drinks. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, <laughs> be prepared for six <laughs> sessions, guys. Oh no, we're gonna we're gonna go all night. We're gonna get uh, the GM hyped up on caffeine. Jim, 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 Jim. <laughs> Jim? My name isn't Jim. It is now Buckaroo. Says the man about to open a thirty-two a ounce freaking monster. monster. It is already open before, so there's no sound. It's just <laughs> you, you're still about to open. You know. That's true. I want the audience to know. We we may get up hopped up on caffeine when we play, but we don't do alcohol, despite how loopy we sound. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not during true. True. We don't <laughs> need alcohol. <laughs> I'm high on life. Wait, you don't Speak get high for on alcohol. Yourself. I mean <laughs> what's in that coffee? <laughs> who says it's not Irish coffee? Ah. <laughs> okay, Abby is the only one who drinks alcohol. I guess I spoke too soon. I didn't like <laughs> survey people, I just assumed. I think you should specify at the table. You don't drink alcohol at the she table. She just said she's drinking oh, yeah. Irish coffee. I know, coffee. but you didn't specify. We're working. No. <laughs> That's true. And let us begin. Lettuce. I love lettuce. It's pretty good when it's diced up real small. I do not like lettuce. Get some dressing on it. Get mm-hmm. over yourself. I, I like that Olive Garden dressing, honestly. Speaking of soda, let's jump in. Into soda? That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> so swimming out of this pool of soda that guards the door of the apothecary, <laughs> you all have walked out into the streets. You've seen this strange woman walking up, and she seems to be looking for you. Do we have a leader? <laughs> Is any of our group a leader? It was Hamir. It was <laughs> Hamir. Don't make it me again. <laughs> I, mean, I was pointing it out. Never, I, yeah. I, I agree never, with Abby. It's never been Hamir. It's always been. I, it really I has been Alward. It is Alward. I nudge Alward. Zephyr nudges Alward forward. Just, hey, what? Go talk to the lady. Are we still? <laughs> aren't, aren't we still like really far away from each other? Why, why do I need to talk? Yeah, to the your guys are at least thirty feet apart. She she looks eager to talk to us. Uh, she doesn't. She looks like she's minding her own business. She's mumbling and pointing at us. It's true. <laughs> That's exactly what she's doing. <laughs> and the little fellow with her is also mumbling and pointing at us. There's a lot of fingers going on. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, uh. I nudge you again. <laughs> with one shoulder, then two. Okay. I don't know how I'm getting both there. Um, c- can I? C- can we help you? You're just shouting <laughs> in the middle of the street. I yeah. said go over there. What kind of a first impression are you what making? What if she attacks me? We'll be back up. <sighs> she just hears you say that, looks down at her friend and goes, Ah, Cornelius, which one of us should go talk to them? You're, you're the talking one. I'm, I'm the... I'm not helping you talk one. Well, that's true, but you know things, and sometimes you can be a good first impressionist. <laughs> impressionist. <laughs> impressionist. <laughs> You're right. I'll go up and do my goofy voice. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, uh, you know what? It's but probably would be. A, why don't you just come with me? I don't know why we're talking about these. Come on. All right, I'll follow you. Oh, hello. What does Cornelius look like again? What is Cornelius? What do you look like again? 
Sam, it's been a whole week since the audience had that brief glimpse of your character. <laughs> it's been yeah. so it's one episode. Do you want to describe Cornelius? You described him last time. Yeah, so Cornelius is just, he's, he almost is three foot tall. If you asked him, he would say three foot tall, but Alward, you know better. Yeah. He is a little bit under three foot tall. He is, he walks with like a strange like hunch to his shoulder and has strangely deformed like arms. He might have like an extra little arm. You're not sure. It's just hard to tell exactly. He's got one big eye in the middle of his head. So he's clearly not like any specific. No. Um, actually, anybody who's interested could make an arcana check. Ooh, I shall. Hang, I have to do math with that one. 29. I rolled an 18. I'm very happy with that. What'd you get? 29. Nice. <laughs> I rolled a 16. 25. 26. Wow. <laughs> How is 25 the lowest? <laughs> so everybody figures out immediately as these two are walking up, you know that Cornelius is a flesh warp. Ah, mm. okay. oh. Alward and Uver get the sense that this is like the Thessalonian branch of flesh warping. So like mm. in this area is where that type of flesh warping was used. But yeah, so Cornelius is as you have determined, a flesh warp. And he's got that just like one big eye in the middle of his head. He has a oversized cloak that he has drawn around him usually to try to obscure casual viewers from noticing all of these eccentricities about his form. But as they're approaching, you have plenty of time to observe and realize that he's got something interesting going on with his self. Mm. Oh, but we noticed. We noticed through that cloak. So a quick rundown of uh, my character. She is tall, six foot two, very pale. Half of her face has tat- like paint, face paint, like it shows some vagueness of the skeletal features. And then the right side has like an arc of w- wing feathers, feathers coming out of her, or across her eye. Like a tattoo? Yeah, but, but they're probably more paint than they are tattoo. Mm. And then she's wearing armor and has a helmet at her side that's all very raven themed. Oh. And she has a big old glaive on her back and oh. some instruments. Ravens, I like ravens. Hello there. Uh, h- hello. Uh, is, is that? And I, I point to Cornelius. Is that your ha- handiwork? What? Your your friend. My handiwork. He's not. He's my friend. Right. Yeah. Cornelius like shakes his head and is like, "Oh no, no, I'm very old." It's true, he's very old, and he never tells me how old exactly. It, it, uh, nice I, to meet you. My name's Val. Val. Uh, n- Kill n- Nice to meet you, uh, uh, oh. Val. Oh, and, hello. And your uh, friend, uh, Cornelius. Uh, is, is that what you said your name was? Uh, yes. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I have not seen uh, someone's like you in some time. Well, um, those of my uh, type are few and far between these days. And uh, usually a little less polite. Well, manners makes the world go round, I suppose. Indeed, indeed, uh, friend, I think. <laughs> okay, well, that was rude. <laughs> that, that was kind of well, rude. It, it, it is... If you'll excuse me, it is considering what we came across in the uh, the library. Oh, so you did. So you did see one of his well, kind it's recently. It's different. I mean, it's different just because he can talk, but it's not uh, different. I I, I'm a, I apologize. I I don't mean to be rude. It is uh, unusual and not in a bad way. I Cornelius think. looks at the rest of the group. Is he always this prejudiced? <laughs> uh, un. Sure. Can we, is, is there something you wanted with us? Only on days that end in Y. Oh, hello. You as well. Um, hello. <laughs> you as well. I mean, he's short. He <laughs> could be harder to see. We, we were uh, told to come talk to you all about the Erdsons. Wait, who told you? Who told you to come talk to us? Exactly. Some. Um, what was his name? Um. It was like Trav, I think. 
Oh, Trov. Oh, yeah, Trov. We were just speaking to him, and he told us you were over this way. Are you from that fighting ring? There's a fighting ring? Yes, Trov is familiar with the fighting ring. We don't no? talk about it. I'm not, and I don't <laughs> really need to be. I hold no ill will towards those who are. I, I think we're are getting you? a little off topic mm-hmm. here. What What do you want to do with the Aridsons? Well, uh, me and my friend Cornelius uh, are wanting to... Uh, we're, we're concerned citizens. As I'm sure you're all aware, the Aridsons are a very significant local crime syndicate. So like a, a mafia? Yeah, they're, they're the mob. Oh, They're the mob with swords and magic. And uh, and she pulls out a piece of paper. And I've got, um, I've got information about some of them, too. So we're not just a couple of people coming here to uh, join up. How did you procure this information? Was it from Trav? No, no, not from Trav. It was from an Aridson himself. Are you friends oh, with the Aridsons? Okay. Oh, Are you no. part of the mafia? No, not friends with them. Just a weird encounter. Which one? I didn't get her name. It's it's not important. We've been doing our own research. Uh, books and talking to people, exploring, and we have some leads. And you all have magical powers. And we heard you've been already working against them. So you thought we could, you know, of speaking. pull our resources. It is unfortunate that we've been uh, become famous, so to speak, in the underworld. Have we? Oh, you all must be related to that revolution over in Joel. We're in Joel. You're, you, we are, you're right. <laughs> no, we're in Tomgrav. <laughs> oh, oh, you're, you're right. He sounded so confident, it really threw me off. <laughs> I thought we were in Joel. I was actually just thinking about asking that. Gonna be honest, I don't even remember running all the way here. Thanks, Cornelius. You really keep me on this trite. So, we'd really like to join up with you guys and put our resources so we could, you know, take them down or something. I, I don't... What do you know of the revolution in Joel? I've just heard of it. I've never met any revolutionists in Joel, but it seems to go around a lot. I don't think a revolution is happening in Joel. I wouldn't expect one to, except for unless it's an Aridson revolution. Would you consider us revolutionists? I wouldn't. I don't know enough about you. You, You, Val. I don't know enough about you to decide if you're revolutionists or not. It's... I don't know anything about the, the revolution or anything happening in Joel. Uh, honestly, our dealings with the Ericsons are <laughs> more of we kind of just fell into them, unfortunately. Th- there's most likely not a revolution in Joel. Um, you seem awfully confident about that. I think I know where those rumors are coming from. He uh, seems quite confident about a lot. It's I'm true. He said we were in sure Joel. Cornelius, what he's true about. Cornelius leans in really close to her. Th- to, to her. Her. Are, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> you say Gertrude. I say Gertrude. Gertrude, Gertrude is the new, the new name. <laughs> so he. Okay. Cornelius leans in close to Val and is like, "I think he's trying to cover for the revolution." <laughs> I don't know. He just seems a little confused. I've had a rough day. <laughs> I understand, friend. Would you like to walk and talk? We're um, uh, we're headed to a family friend. Well, friend of one who is family to them. <laughs> Are you talking about Alwood's? Yes, okay. I, I. But she doesn't know them. Well, I'm going to the bar. Um. To you guys eat their own, I guess. Go over there, I guess. I think Alred and I do have something particularly important to take care of before we do any entertainment. We we do. I mean, I know I do. Well, I figured I'd go with you. Oh, well, that's that's fine. I mean, I'd rather help than go drinking. I w- I would appreciate that. Well, <laughs> we, could, we could go to the bar and get a reservation, and you could meet us there. I don't think it would be wise uh, if they, you know, exist. You have a reservation about my reservation? <laughs> Maybe. Ugh, Cornelius, cut it out. We, we don't know who all's gathering information, so it's my, probably not best to do so in public. Oh. 
Good point. What do you know about helmets? He holds out his hands. I mean, <laughs> I have never <laughs> found a helmet, he says, touching his head. That worked for me. His head's mostly an eyeball. <laughs> I've got the helmet. A helmet or the helmet? A helmet. I wear a... What do you mean the helmet? Yeah, they don't know about There's the lots helmet. of helmets. I and just, I've got one. I was it, just wondering... It's not the helmet. Did you have questions about sizing and fitting? Uh, are you a haberdasher? <coughs> That's for hats, not helmets. No, but I am a shalonite, so I practice a lot of we different We could just arts. keep talking in the streets here. <laughs> That's not. That's also not a good idea. Do you guys have, like, a house or something where we can lay low? I mean, I don't know if it's... I don't know what information is... Yes. Sounds like you're pulling for information. <laughs> you're pulling for a plot line here because we're going to a house. You are? <laughs> <laughs> I've said too much. Can we just... I'd really like to talk to you all more and clearly the street's not the best place to do it. So could we all maybe just reconvene in one place together? We could duck into that alleyway that has a curtain instead of a wall. <laughs> that, that's right next to the schoolhouse. Oh, is that the schoolhouse? That's really run down. <laughs> I played hopscotch there one time. It was very fun. No, I'm, I, I attempted to teach some of the, the children there at one point. I'm going to go and deliver something to my mom. You are all more than welcome to follow, or you can go to the tavern. I don't care. So I imagine Alward just finishes his sentence, turns and just starts walking away, and everyone else yep. just starts following. <laughs> Is anybody not? Zephyr is very close to his shoulder following. Group thought. <laughs> uh, Val will just s slowly start following. <laughs> she's just kind of hanging back because she's confused as to what just happened. So are we. <laughs> Cornelius <laughs> leans in and is like, they seem a little disorganized, but like good folks. Yeah, that's all right. Not everything's going to be organized. So a few minutes later, this group headed by Alward arrives at the Helvig house, which is currently inhabited by the Voldens. I keep wanting to call it the Volden house. It is but it's now not. the Volden house. <laughs> it is the Squatters Volden house. Right. Let's be honest here. It is the Volden house now. Long live the Voldens. <laughs> Zephyr stands outside the door and goes, knock, knock. Uh, Verbally? Yes. <laughs> That's what he does. I'm, I'm <laughs> just going to enter. <laughs> this isn't your house. It, 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 at, is, at this point, I think it is. What? No, squatter's rights doesn't take into effect for like another year and a half. Is that even a law year? Maybe. Did, uh, I think we could probably just find the deed around here and then just sign your name on it. Uh, Hamir would need to sign over his name. <laughs> Speaking of Hamir, does anyone know where he's at? Not since yesterday. I will, I'm going to sit here on this couch, if that's all right. And when you're ready to discuss with me... I will be here. It seems you like you'll have a lot going on. So just let me know. <laughs> she sits down and lifts Cornelius up and puts him next to her. <laughs> His little legs make it about halfway to the ground. <laughs> just One kiddies. of them much closer than the other. <laughs> I'm going to go set the medicine uh, on my mother's uh, like side. W what's that thing called? Nightstand? Side table. End table? So Nightstand. Nightstand. Night table? Nightstand. Night table. Stand table. Night table. Uh, and then is, do it stealthily to not wake her. Make a still now, Jay. <laughs> she wakes up and attacks. So you said you had information? Ah, yes, I do. Um, I get some information about three of these uh, Erdson fellas. Uh, Psycho, Rangur, and Ordfis. I don't know if you're familiar with them. One second. I'm going to need you to slow down on the, the way you're saying uh, that and then spell it. Well, I'll go over them one at a time. <laughs> I just thought I'd give the overview in case um, you all are aware of any of them. Ordfis is their propaganda machine. What were the other ones? The uh, Bringer and Saito. Bringer is training berserkers and Saito is unsure. What is Saito doing? Ah, uh, well. I can tell you all about Saito then. Saito is S A I T O, in case you need to spell it. He is called the King Shield. He joined the family about eight years ago. He's from Tian Sha. Uh, he's over in the mountains to the east of the Kodor Mountains. Or on the east of the Kodor Mountains. He's trying to get some sort of sword. And, uh, well, I guess we know where he is. Cornelius is like 
pulled a bag of peanuts out of somewhere in his cloak and is eating them and is like, he's up the, um, the Summer Melt Valley looking for... Can you not eat when you talk? That's very distracting. It's through Cornelius apparently, Manners. Apparently, I changed my voice when I talked to you, so there's that. <laughs> Manner. <laughs> but you know, flesh warps, they're just all full of surprises. Oh, Man- there's the problem. You were eating voice-changing berries. Manners, Cornelius Manners. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm hungry. They were nice. uh, he, he's, uh, he's a last, was, he was last seen heading up into the mountains in the Summer Melt Valley. Wasn't he at the meeting that happened like a day ago? No, actually, he was absent okay. from the meeting. And then uh, what I know about Bringer is he's over west of Joel, near the Gungnir Forest. It's a camp of warriors that he's training. I think you guys said something about that. Um, then there's Ordfis, the zealot, apparently. He's a very zealous man. But he's over in Joel doing some paperwork to establish a new religion, officially. For, uh, you know, rights and uh, protections and legalities. Um... And then I've got this other note here that I think Cornelius might have written. But he says that they seem like they're planning a full military takeover of the area, starting with Joel. We knew that. Well, I don't really know what you We know. didn't know about Sato, though, so that's very good. Thank you. I think it's Saito. Saito. He's Saito. Well, I'm not really sure. So, question here. Are, are we planning on disposing of the um, members of this group? I thought you were planning to do something like that. I, that's why we're here. But Maybe not to kill them. But well, you know. I didn't mean to kill the first one, but it happened. What? Um, you killed one of them? No, I didn't mean to. But you did? Th- I know I've asked you this before, but for, for a man who works in secrecy, you are not very secret. I have said this time and time again. The people I work with don't usually end up staying alive for very long. Oh. So it doesn't matter. Um... Uh, uh, <laughs> he's weren't there five of you <laughs> yeah but the other one didn't die he just we don't left. know where he's at are you sure we and he's know. looking at Zephyr don't look at me eat We're, your nuts he, he was not anywhere near the other one when he left so he's the one that we can vouch for that one he's the one that left the one who owns his house yeah 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 oh yeah I see <laughs> <laughs> all right um that sounds fine. Are you waiting for him, or is he leaving no. you all? No. Uh, well, we're not. Not really. We didn't really I mean, have a, a a plan. Yeah, I'm all for oh. not waiting for him. But did I come in before the planning stages? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. sort of. It, this just happened a bit ago, so it's not. Uh, sorry. You know, we are coming in here assuming you guys already had this whole big plan to do no. stuff, and we wanted to just join in. Uh, as I said and before, we kind of just fell into this. Yeah. Recently. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How long have you guys been doing this? So Not long. Essentially about a month? A month? And thereabouts, and most of that was traveling. Yeah, it's about yeah. six weeks overall, because yeah. there about was that month of downtime. A, a little over a month ago, um, oh. we I was hired to hire people as bodyguards. We don't need to go And then one the of the bodyguards story. stole a helmet, and long story short, we're here now. <laughs> oh, so you brought up the helmet. Honestly... I think the easiest thing would be to try to prevent the new religion from joining, from being started, but I don't know. Well, actually, I, I actually, something that you said... Uh, We're uh, not going to the Grand Gear Force. No, 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 no. <laughs> as much as I wish to go there, there, there is one thing that you said that I am interested in, and that is the, he, uh, this, this one that wasn't at the meeting. Uh, his name was... Uh, Saito? Sa- Saito. He's looking for a sword, you said. I... Um, I do believe you have, and I mean, I would hate to suggest this, but we are in need of lead. I thought he was your leader. He seems no, no, quite no, no. fitting. It's, it's a leader of uh, something to go towards. Oh, lack sort of lead. Yeah, well, um, Sorry, it's not the first time that's come up around me. No, normally Cornelius decides for me where we're going next. Do you have any thoughts, Cornelius? Well... All of the other family members are kind of close by each other right now. We could go after Saito while he's alone. You and I were planning on going after him because he's alone and without reinforcements. Oh, is that who we were going to go after? Right, because there's nobody around. And now with five of five capable fighters, surely we could take him down. I agree. Usually targets are easier to take down when they're alone. That's it. 
there is also the matter that he's looking for another uh, piece of what I'm guessing is is Ericsson's uh, armor or that, something. I was yeah, I was about to bring that up. Um, it, if they need all pieces, then that's always part of the piece. And unfortunately, we've lost the uh, other one. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Huh. I think Val may have had the same thought that Sam just had. What was that? If you I choose to have that thought. I don't think she would have thought anything. We, oh, we purposefully right. did not think you're about right. that in my prologue. Sam knows things Val does not. Why aren't we allowed to know things that Val does not? You'll listen later. You weren't there either. <laughs> what do you all think then? About. Again, I think. Seto is our best target if we're going to commit to this pass. I agree. Path. As much as I often don't agree with you, Uver, I agree. I did recently just restock on um, the antidote for my mom, so she should be good for at least a month. Oh, is your mom all right? Uh, she's fine. I have some healing. Is there something I can do? Uh, uh, maybe... I don't know what you're capable of, but all the other healers weren't able to do anything, so I don't... Oh, probably not then. Was they all magic healers? Yes. Not all of them, of course, but a lot of them. We don't need to get in... It's all right. To that it's right all right. Now. She um, puts her hand on your shoulder while still sitting down. She's like, uh, it's all right. A mage hand comes <laughs> out and grabs her hand <laughs> and moves it. He doesn't like to be touched. Ah, I see. I do. She looks away from Zephyr. <laughs> <laughs> Cornelius puts his hand on her shoulder. <laughs> Zephyr, <laughs> Zephyr sighs as if he's been longing for the touch of compassion for a long time. If his hand is slimy. It's compassionate. <laughs> slimy <laughs> may be slime. compassionate sometimes. Except my compassionate slime. Um, <laughs> does anyone... Um, does... <laughs> Kids, fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Uh, does anyone know uh, how far away these Summer Melt Valley is from here? That's where he's at. Let's see. Uh, who all is trained in either survival or society? Uh, I'm expert in society. I'm trained in both. Okay. I'm trained in survival. Are you want to answer roll? No. Uh, this one I'm going to just run uh. by proficiency. I'm expert in society. I'm and also trained in survival. I'm also an expert in society. Ah. I'm going to say, since I posed the question, I don't know. <laughs> Alward does not know. But everybody else knows that it would be about eight days on foot, depending on which path you take. Because there's a lot of, like, uh, you know, a ravine here, hills there, stuff like that, where it's like you could cut across, but it would be a more treacherous path, or you could go the long way around and it's smoother. I think we need to get another cart with insurance. Oh, cart insurance is very helpful. Especially when people run off with them. Well, I mean, to be fair, we, we never went back to go get the cart, so I would I assumed he was on his way. We, we were running for our lives, so. He yeah, didn't meet fair. us with the cart, that's so I assumed true, he took the yeah. cart. Yeah. Good riddance. Anyway. Whoa. Ooh. Ooh. I don't want to buy a cart. I I don't have any money. I just had to borrow money rent. from Zephyr. Hey, cart. I can rent a cart. Let's just go. Um, Tired of being here. I might. I don't know if I have enough. I bet a, a renting a cart's probably expensive, right? How much was it? I don't remember. Plus an additional gold for the cart insurance. Chump change. Two silver pieces per five miles per person. That's a lot. That's a really specific we, amount that yeah. I don't want to have to calculate. We also didn't do that last time. No, we didn't. We just hand waved How it. How much is it to buy a carriage? Ah, what a question. A hundred like gold pieces. Oh, that I don't That's have. a lot for I just a carriage. What about a cheaper carriage? How much is just getting some horses then? Maybe that'd just be better. Yeah. Ah, that, oh, I don't know why I'm answering this Cornelius. <laughs> <laughs> Cornelius. In that pamphlet you have there, how much is horses? Ah, uh, yeah. Let me turn to page three on this horse page pamphlet. Uh, eight gold pieces per horse. Just to That's buy the purchase forever? price. Yep, yeah, forever. That's not that bad. If you want war horses, I... those would be thirty gold. Oh, I don't think we need. Them. How much faster would it be if we got horses? Hold on, I, I did this once. Like half the 
pace? Yeah, it's about double speed. So you could make it with horses. You could make it in six days. Reason being, the path is not level. If it were just a like a plane, it'd be a four day ride. But because of all of like the spots where you're gonna have to like double back and switch backs and bridges and stuff like that, you can do six days with horses. It's four days total saved for eight gold in future travel. I don't have eight gold. I don't either. Yeah. Oh, re- re- really? Sven, yeah. we spend our gold, and we all didn't start with 15 extra gold. Also, it's pretty established. We don't have as much gold as we were supposed to have. Yeah. You know what? Val, I've been saving this for a rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Pulls out a bag of 40 gold pieces. Oh, that's um, nice of you, Cornelius. It's time to go horse shopping. Well, before we go, we do need to make a few other stops. Oh, that's fine. It's not raining. What? What? You said you were saving it for a rainy day. No. It's a figure of speech. You're a figure. I know. <laughs> if I might for a second, now that it seems like we're all settled to be a team here, I'd like to... Can, can I get introductions around? <laughs> <laughs> she walks up to Alward. I'm Val. Oh, um, I'm Alward, and, and a mage hand shakes your hand. Oh. oh, and if I might, this might be a little weird to each of you. So tell me if you don't want me to do it. As a Shailen, I, as a worshipper of Shailen, when I see beauty, I'm supposed to not let it go unnoticed. So I've been practicing when I meet someone, just saying something that I find beautiful about them. Is that all right, or is that too weird for you? Considering you've said nothing about any of us yet, (laughs) I find that very (laughs) offensive. We haven't had introductions yet. This is this is the introduction part. You still met us. Oh, I, Hi, I I'm Zafir. Hi, I'm Val. I wipe, I wipe some of the the slime off of my shoulder and shake your hand. Oh, I really, you're With the slime hand. Yep. <laughs> your eyes will tell me you have a very kind soul deep in there, and I really like your hair. It's very soft looking. Zafir, are you going? Are you okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alward, I don't know what you call them, but I really like the gem crystalline things on your body. How about that? He's trying to like look at them. <laughs> They're very beautiful. I I don't I never thought about what to name them. Oh. Well, I'm not gonna name them for you, so I'll let you have fun with that. <laughs> I've got a couple of names in mind. Oh. They all start with R. What are they? Richard. <laughs> Richard the second. There are far too many. Richard the third. <laughs> I'm not gonna name. I I've never counted my moat my my crystals. I don't. Well, if you find a new one, you can always add another number to it. Do you often find new ones? No, I I don't. Th- they just <laughs> exist. Are they like freckles? Yeah, they're kind of like just sort freckles, of show up every basic, now and then. Yeah. They're very yeah. interesting. I mean, they're more obviously more prominent than right, yeah. right. freckles, but all right. I've never like counted them. How you should. <laughs> now I'm curious. So, <laughs> give me about two hours. <laughs> <laughs> so Val turns to Nearest. So, Hello, my name is Val. <laughs> Hi. What's your name? Nearest. Nearest. It's good to meet you, Neros. Your hands are very interesting. Oh! They change the color as I go. Yeah, I guess I've just gotten used to them. I I find them very interesting, and it's very unique, and you're also very beautiful. You, hello. <laughs> My, she, like, awkwardly turns and then goes over to Uver. <laughs> hello. My name's Val. My name is Uver. Nice uh, to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's a very wonderful, beautiful thing that someone with your experience is teaching and protecting these young folk as a group. Um. <laughs> he doesn't remember <laughs> half his life. So. <laughs> I think your opinion on that might change later. Well, <laughs> I should say No offense. All, all, of, all of this does seem very surface level, but I'm sure as I get to know you all, I'll find so many more beautiful things about each of you. Uh, I, that I don't have to tell you each of the things. I, so. I will say, in, in response to you, is 
Yes, I don't remember certain parts, but I do have a lot of memories. I think I was told my grandfather had a lot of the same issues. <laughs> it, you know, as a side note, Uwe, how strong do you think you'd be if you didn't lose your memories? Because you're very old for a dwarf. <sighs> Cornelius, you hear that? He's really old, too. Mm. If this were an old contest, I would win. Uh, are you <laughs> greater than 300? I stopped counting. Oh, oh I wait. see. I, I, uh, I, I would actually very much like to talk to you about some things. Um, Have you been in this area for long? I, as the champion of old, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, Howard gets really excited when he says he stopped counting and uh, attempts to speak to him in, in ancient Thessalonian. I want both of you guys to make a perception check. I'm pointing at Jenkins and Sven. Because he, he didn't think he'd be able to. Oh, 13. I'm... I don't know if I use that ability yet today. I don't think so. You haven't. No, you haven't. Okay. <clears throat> For sure. I think that literally Sorry. just got me the same result. Um, so everyone gets a very strong sense of deja vu for about three seconds, and I rolled an 18. Whoa. Whoa. So I'm going to say that sense of deja vu kind of throws Uver off, and he's just kind of like, I feel like, I feel like Alward's asked that question before, and it distracts you momentarily enough so that you don't catch what Alward sees of he, like, kind of turns his head like he recognizes it for just a second, and then Cornelius is like, uh, what, are you, what are you saying? Uh, oh, um... I guess it is a dead language. I shouldn't have. Wow, you speak a dead language. Up. That's pretty cool. Well, the enunciation might be incorrect since it's been. I speak a lot of dead things. Well, what? What? I... <laughs> what does that mean? I won't go into detail. Oh my gosh. Perhaps I should tell you a bit about myself before we get started on anything. I figure that comes with time. Well, I just okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't don't let him shut you down. You seemed excited. He, he is awkward like that. No, I please continue. am a follower of Shailen by choice. You've mentioned that. And a follower of Harazma by duty. I Sam, could we get a quick introduction to who Shailen is for those who don't know? Shailen is the goddess of like art and beauty, crafting, love, stuff like that. And then uh, Thrasma, who I also mentioned, I think we've talked about before. Multiple times. Do yes. it again. Okay, so she's... No, I'm not going to talk about Thrasma. Do it again. Thrasma's the goddess who oversees the dead Thank and you. souls. So, like she said, I serve Shailen by choice, and I serve uh, Thrasma, and she picks up a little amulet around her neck, um, by duty. Or um, something along those... Maybe a different word than duty, but yes. I serve those two pretty well. I play lots of instruments. I'm a bit of a scold around the area. A Zin, what? You like uh, warrior bard. Oh, thank you. Then you like to uh, tell some of the old tales that uh, are in the area. I try to. I'm learning a bunch of them. They are fascinating, I say. Yes, I spent a lot of time uh, kind of isolated. So I don't know a lot of things, but I'm learning a lot. If you would like to see some of the, the older ones, I have some written down. Oh, that would be pretty swell sometime, perhaps. But I thought I'd let you know. I use this here glaive to fight and some magic from my deities. And a bit of magic from my music. Out of character, are you a war cleric? I'm not going to say anything. Gosh <laughs> darn it! Because <laughs> you, you told us you're not a bard. I oh, love anyway. the slow burn of class reveals. <laughs> anyway. Um, and I'm also pretty young, it seems like most of you. I'm like 24. Yep, about. I think same. 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 I'm twi 27. I, it's in the right, around the same area. I, the only I, one who's I, actually I, old is him. I am the eldest here. Uh, yeah, far. I think we are. Are you sure? Well, about I mean, Cornelius. That. Yes. I am the champion of old. He's not, you're not the eldest and anymore. And we must have many conversations because there are some things that I'm sure that you have lived through that I would love to discuss. Yeah, I've lived through a lot. Uh, real fast, you did say I recognized him recognizing the language. Yes, Alward, you okay. know that he recognized it and he was successfully able to hide it from everyone else. Okay. Um, well, I don't really have anything else to do around town, but it sounds like each of you do, so 
I might spend some time over at the tavern playing some music or something. We'll get along just fine. Oh, that's great to hear. That's great to hear. Um, that's good. I like. I look forward to spending time with you. I didn't know you could play music. I don't know. I don't play. Uh, you sing? I didn't know you could sing. Not well, she but does doesn't stop She me. is able to sing. How are you bit. with the oh. drum? Me? Yeah, what? Like a drum. How are you keeping a beat? I don't. Um, with my foot. Sure. Or your full hands. What? You could keep. I'm saying you could keep. You could play the drum for me while I'm oh, doing other things. That's you could not, keep the beat going. Did not catch that. I'm um, sure. If you're interested. I. Uh, just the thought. We'll talk about that later. As as much as I would love to continue and especially continue a uh, conversation with uh, you, me? when do we want to leave? Yes, you. Oh. Um. I, I, I will show you my things later. Um, <laughs> when do we want to leave? Probably tomorrow. I have my things. books. <laughs> uh, my gosh darn it. <laughs> I'm just going to ignore them. Um, Not you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I, I have things to give to Bran, um, and I need to talk to him uh, about stuff. Uh, Bran was the dwarf who makes all of the automatons Isn't around he the air. No, he's here, right? He's in Copperberg. Oh, uh, well, we need to go to Copperberg. <laughs> Which is an, a day's travel in the opposite direction of where you need to we go. We need to go to Copperberg. I'm not walking around with all of these soul orbs. That's true. We do need to drop that. That, that is a good point. So it's, maybe we leave today. It would be a day's travel with horses? Uh, With horses, you could do it in a half day. What time is it? Half it's, it's just afternoon. It was high noon when you guys met Val and Cornelius. <laughs> it's, it's half day right now. It is half day. It's half day. I, I I need a little time, perhaps, just to finish. Uh, I, I travel light, as you all know, so I only need a little bit of time to pack up, but I don't know about the rest of you. It would be best to probably not stay in the same place, uh, especially stay here with your family is in case other people come to look for us. I mean, if they do come to look for us, I'd prefer that I be here um, then not just leave my family then not to worry young man and Trav kind of stumbles around the corner from another room I will keep this place locked up tight and safer than a walnut did you deliver my message Trav yes I did okay thank you it's gonna take some time to go through a guy who knows another guy who knows another guy so give it a you know about a day maybe a week okay (laughs) hi Trav hey Val (laughs) <laughs> Looks like you found them. Yeah. There's one less of them than I thought there would be. Oh. Yeah, you guys you guys didn't find him? No. We didn't really look. Well, that may be a contributing factor. He didn't really seem interested in continuing whatever we're working on, so. That's fair. That's fair. I feel like we haven't really unpacked this. Is anyone Does I, anyone have feelings? I am a licensed therapist. Ah. <laughs> Insight check? <laughs> Not necessary. He's lying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's very kind of you, Trav. How do you know Trav? I think Cornelius found him. Oh, yeah. You know, just two information brokers. We go way back. And he, like, strikes a pose next to Cornelius, who just looks at him, like, disdainfully. <laughs> well, they Makes sound sense. a lot alike. <laughs> no, this is Trav and this is Cornelius. They're completely different. I, I can hear it. Uver um, looks at Trav and uh, kind of like, sure. <laughs> I heard you guys were buying some horses. I am a master negotiator. Oh, that's wonderful. I think that's the only thing I believe from him so far. I think that you and Cornelius's prowess and money could potentially get us somewhere. In the meantime, I think that a trip to the bar for not drinking purposes might be in order. What else do you do at the bar? That is a good question. There's a certain fighting ring underground. I play lots of music People that are good at fighting that might be able to protect your family. You know, that kind of thing. Trav's got that taken care of. Yeah, Rhea is a total boss at fighting. But Rhea she did get beat up. Well, she got snuck up on. Yeah, she was, like, assassinated. 
Huh? Oh my goodness, is she she's dead? <laughs> no, she's talked to you since then. Well, you just said she was assassinated. I was exaggerating. That's why I had the comparative word like in my sentence. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Trav grabs a crutch that's leaning off the wall and supports it under his side that has a missing leg from the knee down and then grabs Cornelius with his other arm and is like, me and the boys going shopping. Wait, how long has your leg been missing? Uh, a number of years. Wow. I guess we just never noticed. I didn't even... I'm about the same height as your leg. I didn't even realize. You could be my leg. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. No. Um, Cornelius, if you're going shopping for horses, um, and she reaches down into a bag, here's some money. Could you buy me a war horse? Ah, sure. Thanks. Or if you can get it for a cheaper... That'd be great. Oh, I yeah. think. What, what color do you want? Is that I think the right have... amount of gold? I haven't handled gold. Uh, how much did you pass over? Um, she passed like 50. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's going to be just barely enough. Trov? Yeah? Don't. Hey, I gave um, them to Cornelius. Cornelius is just staring daggers at him. <laughs> Make sure you give them back all of the money that is supposed to be there. Uh, well, I and Cornelius cuts in. We'll try to get the best deal we can, and um, we'll we'll bring back the change. Thank you. That'd be nice. I think they said it was like thirty gold for a war horse. Can I get one with brown spots? Not a war horse, just a regular one. Ah, uh, we'll see what we can do. Uh, uh, if we're doing colors, I would prefer to have a black one. I don't think that's an option. All I, right. I mean, it, uh, brown spots, black one. Okay. I'm leaving before I get any more specific <laughs> orders. Bye, Cornelius. I'll be at the bar. <laughs> Cornelius has just like a moment where he feels like he ought to say something and then doesn't and walks out. She's a little sad about that. You have a very interesting relationship with this man. Man. It's a long and complicated history. It's... It's like a couple of years. You had to look at your watch for that? Yes. Why do you want to go to the tavern? It's a very relaxing atmosphere. Restful. Depends. It, uh, I wanted to go talk to... Uh, what's her name? Rhea? <laughs> Bless you. your face. She walks around the corner. You call? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's the one who sneezed. Why are you in the house? <laughs> Excuse me. I'm... Keeping an eye on your family? Wait, she is here? Yeah, we talked about this. I thought that was Trav's This job. was so long ago. Uh, it was just before you went to the alchemist. There are so many Wait, people is, in this house that Rhea we had no idea. actually there? Yeah. You know, I prefer you watching over my family more than Trav. He's got some skills, but I've got a club. <laughs> oh. In that case, I don't think there is a need for us to go to the bar. <laughs> yeah, there is. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm sure there's alcohol down in the basement. Unless she drank it all last time. You might want to send another shipment, Rhea says, looking sheepish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm going to go to the tavern. I'm sure there was alcohol. You guys talk whatever you need to talk about. I'm just... Yeah, yeah, bye. Oh, bye. It is. You can go with her if you want. Okay. <laughs> She kind of like sits, stands up slowly, kind of looks around, and then just kind of awkwardly shuffles out. This <laughs> poor, sweet, innocent child. Will I meet up back here or find you at the tavern? Okay. Uh, Neros, do you need to pack up anything? Neros is gone. Oh. <laughs> you look over and she's just, she's, she's just walked out. Okay. The All door right. is swinging back and forth on its hinges. <laughs> How did she do that? Uh, I, I, I will just uh, say. I guess we'll just pack up her things real quick. I don't think she has that much. I'm not going through her things. I didn't say go through her things. I said pack them up. You have to go through them to pack them up. As an Abby note, don't go through Nero's stuff. Not go through your stuff. We're leaving today. Don't pack her stuff. Zephyr She's is got also what gone. she needs on her person. She doesn't carry a lot. <laughs> oh, well, well that's, that, that's a different matter. If where you already got all your stuff, then okay. I will pack it. D did you see where Zephyr went? It, it's you disappeared too. Uh, I, 
honestly, I wasn't paying attention. All right, we'll talk to... I don't know what you want to talk to her about. Hi, I'm Raya. You wanted to talk to me? <laughs> Have we met? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Raya leans in close to Albert. I know you'd mentioned he had memory problems, no, but I didn't no. think it was this that bad. That was out of character. It's like, I thought you said that like we hadn't met, and I'm like, have we met? Uh, <laughs> I was being sarcastic. Uh, no, no, apparently the, the, the appropriate conversation about his family has already been done, so uh, we are. I am happy to see that you, that they are taken care of. Of course, yes. I will make sure that they're safe. And... Uh, we are sorry that uh, you were uh, snuck up upon uh, due to what we left. No, it's fine. It's it's part of the job. I only regret that I wasn't able to get a good smack in on that assailant next time in a rematch. Well, hopefully there won't be a next time. I am interested in who actually did that. They didn't kill you, and they could have. That's a good point. And it doesn't strike me that... The Eridsons would have been so sloppy as to leave such loose ends, but um, I don't know. I'm pretty sure after interacting with them, it was Siggy. Siggy? Sigmund, I think was his name. We we gave him a name. We gave him a ride. Uh, the, the thing is, is that he didn't kill her. Well, he, he didn't have to kill her. He just needed the well, Why helmet. would he not to tie up to the loose ends? He didn't seem like he... Because he could have killed me and Zephyr instantly, but he let us... I just, I don't think he'd kill somebody without proper reason. See, he is part of the mob. Doesn't mean he doesn't have a conscience. And they they were willing to kill us. The one person was willing to kill us. Regardless, it is unusual. I'm not saying you're wrong about that, but he's an unusual guy. Uh, Also, when did the helmet get taken? It was the same morning of the day of the event. So it couldn't have been Siggy. When you guys left town that morning to head out and prepare for the event. Well, he didn't have the helmet then. Because you saw that he had a guilty face. How long does it take to get from here to Joel? Half a day if you're on horse. It could have been Siggy. So here's the thing, and here's what you're forgetting. You already knew that the helmet was a fake. We didn't. We had no idea the helmet's a fake. Yes, you did, because you did an insight check on him whenever you asked if that's the real helmet, and he had a guilty look. No, the gu- I'm assuming the guilty that. look is because of what he had to do to get the helmet. So has, since it has been a few weeks, the question that you asked and got an insight check and got the guilty face, you asked, what did you do to get this? Oh. True. But. That's why Alward's like, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Siggy. So I think we'll go ahead and cut from there over to the bar in town. The miner's pick. Where we see... Neros and Val walking up to the bar. And Zephyr not following closely, probably about <laughs> 10, 15 feet behind. So close enough that I might notice that you're there. If I t- yes. <laughs> okay. Hold on, hold on. Roll perception. Uh, Me? I'm having you roll. I'm going to roll stealth. It, so if she's rolling perception, it's against your stealth DC. If you're rolling stealth, it's against her passive perception. <laughs> her perception okay, well, DC. I both want to roll. Yeah, her perception DC. Wait, what's Ooh, my perception I roll DC? Two. Can I roll? Okay, two? so it doesn't matter. You notice me because I rolled a two. Perception <laughs> is perception plus ten. Okay, You're, you would be rolling against an eighteen then. Yeah, I. What is your stealth? Well, see, it's plus ten, but yeah. still twelve oh. is less than eighteen. Yeah. Mm. You, you notice that, that's up to you. <laughs> hey, that's up to you to say anything. Well, when Val gets in, she's gonna head over to her room, and she starts uh, taking off all of her armor. And she's looking over to grab her music. And as she's taking off her armor, she starts undoing some straps and such around her right shoulder. which And, like, the armor kind of disconnects there at the sh- shoulder from the rest of the armor. And she ca- just takes off her arm. I knew you were going to say that. And then, Wait, like, you, like, your entire arm just comes off? Well, from, like, a couple inches on the shoulder. Oh. And then she takes removes the armor from the arm and then puts it back on. And it's a prosthetic. Okay. As, uh, well, she has the armor separated on it. So she's put that on. She does a couple of painting, little, like, drawings on it to give, like, some musical vibes, so, like, some music sheets and stuff very quickly. And then grabs a violin, some flutes, and then lugs a big old drum down <laughs> with her. 
And Neros, I imagine you're getting set up in the common area of the tavern already? Define getting set up. Mm, I imagine preparing to spend uh, some time. Yeah. <laughs> so I've gone up to the bar and I sit down like, yo, hey, bartender, I don't remember your name. I don't know if you have a name. I do have a name. What is it? Starts with the letter C. Let me pull my notes. Cornelius? It's Charles. <laughs> it's Charles. He's in charge. He's in charge. Clement. Oh, Clement. Clement. I have notes. <laughs> Good job. Petite. Thank you. Do you um have something called Witch's Brew? We just got it in. in just bottles of Witch's Brew. I need he, some of that. <laughs> he bends down under the counter and you hear the sound of a crate being pried open. And then he oh, pulls you out. literally just got it in. Stands back up with a bottle. Picks up a shot glass and then like looks to you and just like holds up shot glass, bottle, shot glass, bottle. Meeny, meeny, miny, mo. And he hands <laughs> you the bottle. <laughs> How much is this? I was just thinking, I'm going to have to look that up, aren't I? You can just use your default and indeterminate amount of And an currency. indeterminate amount of money later. Because that might actually influence the decision. <laughs> I don't have much money. Let's say it's five and a half silver. It's one gold piece. Oh, I have one gold exactly. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> I'm going to give him the gold piece. <laughs> <laughs> this, is Im- this is important. It's not, but it's important. I have zero gold. Cool. Do you have any silver? I have seven silver. Any copper? Seven copper. All right, so you're not broke yet. Okay, so I take this bottle of witch's brew, open the cork, swig it back. This is very strong stuff. Chug, chug. Do I have to roll a save? Not yet. Okay. God. <laughs> I imagine Nero's partakes in enough alcohol and liquor that she would have to imbibe more than that before she'd have to start making saves. Okay. I just ask that because you've made me roll a save against this before. <laughs> Only when we have drinking games. <laughs> does this save uh, make any, does it make your perception go any lower? D- does the drink make your perception go any lower? <laughs> so but Pathfinder 2 e has rules for getting drunk and alcohol poisoning and up to death. Well, I don't want her to die. I'm not going to drink it all at once. I just want to know if she's any less perceptive. Probably not. Not with one drink. Okay, well, it seems pretty strong to me. It is, but it's one drink. What does Abby do after she takes a swig? Well, Abby. What does Nero's do after sit she down. takes a swig? <laughs> My bad. Nero's. Uh, do you, does does Nero see Val come back? Yes, yeah, she's uh, she's walking towards the stage. Okay, so Nero's turns around and sees Val, and he's like, "You." Oh, me? Yeah. Hello. You said something about singing. Something like that. Yes. So I was just about to start doing that. What? Yeah. Okay. I, I would join you for that. Okay. If, if you want. Yeah, sure. You want to drink? No, it's fine. Are you sure? Maybe later. All right, all right. I'm about to perform. You don't drink before you perform? No. What? It makes me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Neros makes a face like she's trying to do math and it hurts. Like, um, usually it's the opposite that uh, they call it liquid courage for a reason. I, well, I. What? I don't know. You don't know the answer to that. (laughs) I'm sorry. It just feels I don't often get too drunk, but I do sometimes. Okay. Um, I am setting this up now. Are you getting up at any point? I just got up. Okay. (laughs) So as you're getting up, you feel that there is now a gold coin in your pocket. (laughs) You slipped a gold coin in her pocket? That's weird. After I asked for perception, I I rolled and I rolled a 23. Oh. So she wouldn't feel it. So I wouldn't. No, she would. You would feel it in your pocket, but you would not have felt it going in. Yeah. Oh, hi, Sophia. I'm not there anymore. Oh, you left the whole tavern? No, I just like went to somewhere else. Yeah. In the tavern. I, I did she, too. That's why I said hi while I was walking past you. She points at you sitting down. Hi, Zephyr. He sheepishly holds up his hand and goes, Hey. Zephyr. Yes? 
Get up here. Why? Come here. <laughs> okay. I hold up the bottle of Witch's Brew and it's like, we, come on. <laughs> His eyes widen just a little bit and he starts to just like smile a little and he, he hops up. Like a bunny? Literally hops up like a bunny. Yeah. Beautiful. You got an extra cup? I, uh, t- just share the bottle. All right. I take three gulps. Oh, uh, whoa, whoa. Zephyr, what is your fortitude that? bonus? Uh, that would be plus 10. I think you're fine. This You think? This alcohol is a DC 18 to be okay drinking. Okay. But if you keep going, I'm going to make you roll some saves. I can feel that it has had some effect on me, so I'm just going to... Oh, yeah. I'm going to stay cool with that three drinks. One the gulps. say you're beginning to feel it in the tips of your fingers. I understand that reference. Okay, anyway, what we what we playing? What are we singing? Oh, um, well, I've got a song that I like to sing sometimes. Is it okay? Um, do you want... I don't know if... You, I wrote it, so I don't know if you know the words. Uh, probably not. I tend to make up my own words. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, if you want, you can take these sticks and play the drums. I take this, the drumsticks. They're like two big st- sticks. Those two like sticks with the big like sir- spheres at the end of them because the drums are like like mallets? those big old like, yeah, like four <laughs> foot tall drums. Are, are they wooden mallets or padded mallets? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, have, I have both kinds. <laughs> They're dual sided. Do you one is wait. One what kind of one is the what other. did you describe the drum as? It's one of those like really big drums that you like. A timpani? I don't know. No, I'm not a timpani. A taiko drum. Yeah. I'm like, if it's a timpani, why the heck are you traveling with a timpani? I don't know. <laughs> it's They're the collapsible. marching drum band. No. Nope, nope. No. Different from that too. <laughs> That's a bass drum. She's got collapsible timpanis. <laughs> so that's an entire like, drum kit. They're like this small, <laughs> and then she just goes, and it telescopes. That'd Magic does cool. exist in this world. That would be kind of cool. It would be so much easier to pack timpanis. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it's a just a big drum. I know what okay. you're talking about. Okay. So I don't know where I've seen these drums. I have a mental image of them. I think I have a mental image of one from some throat singing Mongolian song. Yeah, Sven's nodding like he knows exactly the drum I'm talking about. I mean, we all know how well Sven knows throat singing in Mongolian. <laughs> so she's like, here, she picks up her um, violin, but prepares it like a fiddle because they're the same thing. Yep. <clears throat> And she's like, this is a very upbeat song. It's called It's All Right to Not Be Okay. Is, this, <laughs> is your character st- start like emo punk in this fantasy <laughs> world? Who knows? So because Zephyr does it not know the words. Fantasy version of Joan Jett kind of music. And he doesn't care to know the words. Yeah. Every about like two seconds or so in like the corner of the room. He's going to cast Ghost Sound, which is just going to be just a semi-amalgamation of just yeah, screams like of terror. What's it look like? Oh, man. My joke is ruined by man, the is description. I heard you, and I appreciate noise. the joke. I also heard you. I don't know why it has to be screams of terror, not screams of joy, but... Because it's it's Zephyr. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that, that tracks. And as your group invents Screamo, <laughs> no. We're going to go ahead and end the episode there Awesome Cool. Alright, so Sam, you have gotten a welcoming gift Of your hero point for your fun character introduction Hooray It was more than a welcoming gift It's he more deserved than a welcoming it. gift It's a well-earned gift <laughs> I just took fluid motion I think we've had this one before uh, First your turn, gain a climb speed Swim speed equal to half your speed if you make a horizontal leap, increase it by 10 feet. Nothing super Man. crazy there. Don't sound too excited. Thank you. Well, you know, it. I didn't have uh, none of these zero points were ideal for me. So I have them for a reroll, which is always great. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. I'm going to go play some music. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you all in the next episode. This has been an Atomic Broadcasting production. Pathfinder, Galarian, and the Lost Omens world setting are copyright of Paizo. More information at paizo.com. 
Music in the show is from Monument Studios Collection, as well as assorted artists with some original tracks composed by Jordy Hake. More details in the description. If you enjoyed the show, please remember to share with a friend, and we'll look forward to seeing you again next time. It's been so long for us. Um, she is... Yeah. Do I have to go through the whole thing again? I mean, you don't have to. I'm more curious about Cornelius. I can get a mental image of you later. Uh, oh. A, she is a two-foot, burly, bearded... <laughs> All right. And the GM almost does a spit take. Jordan. My sun drop. <laughs>